Welcome back, attorney Andrew Bethel of Bethel Law, where we talk estate planning, finances, real estate, and taxes. In today's video, we're not doing a Q&A, but I will be addressing a common question us estate planning attorneys hear when people come in. Which do I need, a will or a trust? So hit the like button, subscribe, share the video with someone who knows nothing about estate planning, but really should, and let's dive in. Firstly, the really basic answer to this question involves me as the attorney asking two follow-up questions. Do you own any real estate? And is the total value of your assets above the probate threshold, which here in California for 2024 is $184,500? If you answered yes to either of those questions, then the answer to your initial question is you need a trust. Your estate has important assets like real estate or is valuable enough to where probate will be required upon your passing unless you put your assets into a trust. However, that's the really basic answer that simply opens up the discussion on estate planning more broadly. The true answer is both. If your estate is going to be subject to probate, remember you answered yes to either one of those questions, then you need both a will and a trust, but not just any will, you need a pour over will. All right. Now you may be thinking, this attorney is just trying to upsell me by telling me I need more documents so I spend more money. But hold on, before you try to click away to another cat video or one on the Pennsylvania Vision Legacy Scale O gauge engine with a beautiful green paint, stick around to learn why you need a pour over will to go along with your revocable living trust. It's a nice looking engine though, right? Your pour over will works in conjunction with your revocable living trust. In layman's terms, it grabs the non-trust assets and pours them into your trust at your death thus ensuring that nothing remains out of trust in your personal estate, thereby potentially subjecting it to probate. However, that raises the question, why do we even have assets outside the trust, thus endangering a potential probate, if the point of having a trust is to avoid this outcome? Well, the purpose of the trust is to hold assets that would otherwise trigger a probate were they in your name personally when you die. This includes all real estate, regardless of the value, and where we have a total estate value of $184,500 or more, as I mentioned before. This means that all your real estate should be going into your trust no matter what, and that depending on the circumstances, some or most of your financial assets should be transferred and held within your trust. For finances, however, because we have such a large threshold to play with here in California, again, 184,500, you may be in a situation where the only assets going into your trust is your real estate and your checking and savings accounts stay in your name alone because their total value is not high enough to trigger probate. As a special note, we're not talking about retirement accounts today. They stay in your name alone, but you designate beneficiaries on them. I've talked about how to address those assets many times on this channel, so I'll link to a video where you can get specific information just on those assets. Back to your bank account, however. A principal reason why we leave some bank accounts outside of your trust is so those funds may be accessible should the need arise for your family to start taking care of you due to illness or just old age. To explain why, reach back into your knowledge on trust law because I know you've been watching all my videos, right? Well, remember, there are three main roles in a trust. The trust store, trustee, and the beneficiary. The trust store creates the trust and puts their assets into the trust where they're managed by the trustee for the benefit of the beneficiary. Now, what that means is any accounts titled into the name of the trust can only be managed by the current trustee of the trust. If I'm the only trustee of my trust and I have a bank account titled into that trust, then only I can access those funds. If I put my son on as a co-trustee or as the trustee of my trust, it's only then that he can use those funds to take care of me. However, if I never allow my son to become trustee of my trust, then he cannot access my bank accounts in my trust, which is a big problem if I need help doing anything. But that's where we plan ahead and leave my checking and savings accounts in my name alone. I make sure the total value of those accounts is below the probate threshold, and I sign a financial power of attorney appointing my son as my attorney in fact, to help manage my personal affairs. That way, if or when the time comes for him to step in and help me run my life, he can use the financial power of attorney to become a signer on my checking and savings accounts so he can access those funds and pay bills so I don't fall behind on anything. But I'm still trustee of my trust, so I have not yet given him full access to the full kingdom because I still have walled off my castle that is my trust with everything titled into it personal assets covered by the financial power of attorney, and trust assets covered by the trust. Lastly, 
How do we get those personal assets like my checking and savings accounts into my trust at the end of the day? The pour over will. At my death, the financial power of attorney becomes null and void because me as the principal is now dead. However, because those assets were in my name alone and not in my trust, they are a part of my personal estate and thus governed by whatever I have in my last will and testament, which in this case says everything in my estate goes to my trust. It pours over from my estate to my trust. And so long as the right assets were titled correctly into my trust and there was nothing of too high a value outside of my trust, then my heirs will never have to set foot inside a courtroom to distribute my estate. This is all possible because I did the right planning during my lifetime and had the right documents in place. My trust holds the big assets, my financial power of attorney helps manage my personal affairs during my lifetime, and my pour over will ensures it will all make its way into my trust at my death. Do you have any questions or video topics? Let me know in the comments below. Did you say yes to either of those questions I asked in the beginning? Then give me a call. I'm attorney Andrew Bethel. Like, subscribe, share the video with a friend or family member, and I'll see you next time.